right, it's good to have all of you here this tonight. Uh, we're going to continue with our studies on Psalms, and this is Psalm number 45. Psalm 45. I gave you a little bit of an introduction last week on this psalm, and it is a psalm about a wedding, a royal wedding, uh, literally the uh, last supper, uh, the wedding feast supper, excuse me, of the book of Revelation. It is um, a, a poem, it's a psalm, uh, it's a love song. Uh, it is probably sung by uh, uh, a group of singers, uh, and they would sing this song in a worship service somewhere, and it's all about the, the, the royal wedding that the Lord is going to have for us one day when there is a literal union between uh, Christ himself and his church, the bride. And uh, we, we, of course, make up that bride. So let's look at it. He says, the choir master, according to Lily's, a masculine. What did we say masculine was last time? Do you remember? What is a masculine? It sounds, it sounds manly. Is what? It sounds manly. It sounds manly. What is it? No, anybody write that now? It's a song that's a play. Does that right. make sense? That's right. <laughs> so it's, it's actually a musical. It's a play that is sung out. And so when they got up on stage, they would sing this, this song and act it out. There were parts involved in it. And, you know, uh, uh, it, it's just what it is. Okay. He says uh, in verse 1, My heart overflows with a pleasing thing. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of, the, of a ready scribe. You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your splendor and majesty. Okay, so... What do we have here? We got a description. What are we describing? The groom. The groom. Absolutely. We're describing the groom. And he's a handsome fellow. He's got his sword on his side. He's, uh, he's in his dress, um, military uniform. And can you imagine the heartthrob? Of, of your <laughs> husband coming in and he's all decked out in military uniform, got a sword there, and he's ready to get married. Are you excited about that? No, I used to have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one's not like the one you had. <laughs> this one is literally Jesus Christ himself. He, he's being presented to us as the perfect image of what it's like to be the, the bridegroom. Okay, so verse, uh, verse 3, verse 4, he says, In your majesty, ride out victoriously for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness. Let your right hand teach your awesome deeds. Your arrows are sharp in your heart of the king's enemies, the peoples fall under you. Okay, so what do we see here? Riding out victoriously, it's like he's already won the battle. Right. Mm -hmm. what, what battle was Christ won? The one that he's coming to. He, he's won the battle over death, right? Mm -hmm. The resurrection, he's, uh, he's uh, over life and death. He's, he is victorious. He for the cause of truth. Who is the truth? God. Jesus himself is the truth. He is meek. <clears throat> what did we say meekness was? Um, strength and being quiet. Strength under control. That he has the power to, to destroy his enemy, but he restrains that, that strength for righteousness sake. Now let your right hand teach you 
awesome deeds. What is that describing? He's using his right hand and he's learning how to teach you how to do awesome deeds. There's a sanctification process that is taking place in the, in the Christian mm -hmm. and uh, he's learning uh, uh, those deeds. So Your arrows are sharp in the hearts of the king's enemies. What does that mean? So he's literally penetrated into the heart of the king's enemies. Who are the king's enemies? Satan does. Anyone who doesn't believe in him and his nose and his cross. Okay. If, if God can penetrate your heart as a sinner and he can change you, is that not us as his enemy? Think of it that way. That we are his enemy, but with his arrows, he has put his word in our hearts. And he's literally changed us. There's a process that is going on here. Uh, it's telling a, a theological story. Um, the peoples fall unto you. Okay, Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of unrighteousness. What is he saying? The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of unrighteousness. You have loved righteousness and have hated wickedness. It appears to me, uh, you know, I'm just guessing at this. I'm not a great theologian. I could have this totally wrong. But a scepter is a, a, a uh, a rod of authority. Mm -hmm. Okay, it means I have control mm -hmm. even over those who are unrighteous. Okay, so that's his authority. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of unrighteousness. So the world is unrighteous. So he has control of that. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. So he's working out his kingdom. And he's, he's doing that even to this day, but it comes to a fulfillment here at the wedding feast. This is when it's all over with. He's conquered the world. He's conquered the, the nations of the world. And now he's ready to get married. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oils of gladness beyond your companions. Okay, it's very, it's a common thing, especially in these days. You take oil and anoint people, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you just take it out the oil and just annoy them. You know. mm -hmm. uh, Preacher Tom Dyer, I remember when I was a teenager, he'd come out with that oil. Oh, we're going to have a service today, you know. And, and he'd have that oil and he'd be putting it on people's forehead, you know, and praying over them and that sort of stuff. And it was a bit Pentecostal, but although he was Baptist, and that's why we called him Baptist um, it was different. But he was. Reading his scriptures and, and knowing that this is a common thing, especially in ancient days, that they would anoint one another with oil. For oil was a, had a uh, medicinal effect on, on the body. If you cut yourself, you could put oil in it and it would help it to heal, um, that sort of thing. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all fragrant with myrrh, and alloys and cassia from ivory palaces stringed instruments make you glad daughters of kings are among your ladies of honor at your right hand stands the queen in gold of fear hear O daughter and consider and incline your ears forget the people of your father's house the king will desire your beauty since he is your Lord, bow to him. Okay, so what's he saying? Anybody? It kind of sounds like in the marriage ceremony where it says, you know, you you um let go of the mother and the father and you um, become one together. At least to me that's what that's saying. I mean, the, 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 the words that are being used are very royal. 
the very uh, you got things like uh, gold of, of here. Uh, you've got string instruments that are being played. Um, there's palace, ivory palaces. There's all kinds of things that are being described there. Um, and, and he wants you to consider and to incline your ear. And over and over again throughout scriptures, you hear words like that. Consider my words. What uh, uh, was told to Job, for example. He was told, consider my words. Uh, so we're supposed to have uh, this idea of rational thought that we would be able to think about God's words in such a way that would lead us away from the natural wickedness of this world and into a worldview that gives us insight to what God is wanting to accomplish right here in our midst. Um, sometimes when preachers talk like this, we're accused of being fanatical. That, that you, how can you ever believe that you could know what God really wants? Um, read his word. <laughs> it says there over and over again, consider my words. If you just think about how it says it the same way over and over again in every book of the Bible, uh, the same message keeps popping up over and over again. And you begin, at, as you're reading God's Word, you begin to see these patterns. And they show themselves, and you begin to think, this is not my accident. There's repetition here. If I'm going out on the ball field and I want to play ball, uh, the coach hits me grounders, and he keeps hitting me those grounders over and over again. And he keeps saying the same thing. Put your glove on the ground. Bring it up. Don't ever try to go down. You can come up faster than you can go down. You ever heard anybody tell you that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all didn't have a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> you put your glove on the ground and then wait on the ball, and at the last second, that ball's going to jump up and hit you in the face. It just seems like it, that's what it wants to do. And so you can bring your glove up faster than you can to bring it down. And so you just know how to do things because there's repetition, 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 repetition. It's the same way with God's Word. We just keep repeating the same patterns. And the patterns is consider the Word of God. Let him uh, lead you in his way. Verse 10. Hear, O daughter, and consider and incline your ear. Forget your people of your father's house. And the king will desire your beauty since he is your Lord. Bow to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favor with gifts, the riches of people. Um, Tyre was a city on, on the coast in Israel. Uh, it's just to the north of Jerusalem. And uh, um, I, I don't know enough about that city off the top of my head should have researched that one. But in verse 13, he says, All glorious is the prince in her chambers with robes interwoven with gold. Now, they would take gold. If you heat up gold, uh, you can stretch it out. You can stretch it out real thin. You heat it up and just keep pulling it. You'll make <clears throat> long threads. And they literally made threads of gold and interweaved it into the fabric. You know how much that would be today? I mean, it, it's so expensive. And yet, that's what they would do for uh, their, their priests. They would do it for uh, the royalty. They would do it for those who have high honor, those uh, of high prestige. In many colored robes, she is led to the king, and her virgin companions follow behind her. All right. Who is the many colored... Uh, robes placed on the bride, bride. The bride. Who's the bride? We are. We are. Okay, you're going to be given a new robe, All right? What's the Book of Revelations tell us about that? That we'll all be given a new robe, a new body. Mm -hmm. It'll be without blemish. It will be without defect. It will not have any death. It will not have any pain. 
You don't not have any fear. You don't not have any depression. You don't not have any of the things we got now. It'll be a, a better road. And this road will be, it, it's described as pure white. That, and so that garment that we put on will be uh, this robe that it's talking about. And it, she has virgin companions here. I don't know what that's referring to. Maybe it's uh, those who are, are like the angels and are not given in marriage, not married or given in marriage. They're neither male nor female. They're virgins. All right? Maybe he's talking about the angels here. I'm throwing out ideas. I, I don't know. These are possibilities. Okay? Uh, verse 15, with joy and gladness, they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In place of your fathers shall be your sons, and you will make them prince, princesses in all the earth. And I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. I will cause your name. Whose name? Jesus. He's going to cause his name to be remembered in all generations. Of course, this is Old Testament. Jesus is not born yet. So how can we put this on Jesus? Well, these are prophecies. These are prophecies that are found in the book of the Psalms. And uh, he will be born. And this is a foreshadowing. And you we see that literary technique in lots of books. Anybody ever read uh, Stephen King? Yes. Uh, he's a real popular author today, and he does these Four foreshadowing seven. things of things that are about to happen. Uh, there's other authors like that in, in the Lord of the Rings with, uh, uh, what was his name? Tolkien. Uh, Tolkien read, wrote that. He used foreshadowing all through that novel. Uh, so that's what you've got here in this particular Psalms. Any questions? Anything you want to talk about on this particular Psalm? I wonder when you were throwing out things there about these, um, I don't know either, but um, the children and stuff. It goes down in the bottom, talks about Jesus, but if it's still talking about the people that are um, God's people, I wondered if it could be almost like the people that are your are your um, ones that have become Christians because of your um, influence, but what, I don't know what, that. What verses are you talking about? That 16. 16, the place of your well, father's let's see, show your sons. No, that's not the right place. The virgin companions that flowers are brought unto thee. I wondered if these were the new Christians in Christ, is what I was saying. That's that's more of it than the bottom. Number fourteen. Number fourteen. Yeah. Could that be the new, new believers Christians? that come with the, the bride of Christ into heaven? That could be, I guess. I I, I don't I don't know, to be honest with you. Um in her virgin companions, her being meaning the bride. Yeah, the bride. And we're saying that this means her virgin companions. Well, new, new, new Christians religious. are the bride. Uh, in my mind, uh, if you're a Christian, you become the bride of Christ. Uh, so the companions would have to be outside of the group of people that I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. um, but you know. This is deep, this deep stuff, and I'm not going to say stand up here and say I got the answers. I don't. Uh, I'm not a theologian. I'm a preacher. <laughs> and uh, uh, but in my mind, my thinking is that I, it would be uh, someone who is not part of the, the bride of Christ. I mean, the only ones I could come up with would be angels. Okay. All right. That's a good question, though. Anybody else got one? 